Welcome to our lecture online. The more difficult types of problems dealing with inequalities are the type where you have more than one inequality at the same time and therefore when the two lines, the two boundary lines, if they're not parallel to each other, they cross each other, you now end up with four regions. So you have to figure out which of those four regions satisfy and which of those four regions do not satisfy the inequalities. And of course, you have to have them both satisfied at the same time. So here we have, we have an example with two inequalities, and here are the steps. And again, it's following a certain number of steps. Now, we do have to worry about a few additional things when we're dealing with what we would call a multiple inequality problem. Of course, it could be the case where we have three or four or five inequalities, but at this point, we'll only show you how to do when we have two of them. All right, first, we're going to put them into the form y is greater than or less than mx plus b. And of course, we can see that this one is already in the correct form, but this one is not. Also notice how we have numbered the inequalities, and we're going to keep that the same way. So for number one, we're going to change that to bring in the x to the other side. So we have 2y is less, oh, yeah, is less than or equal to x plus 6, dividing both sides by 2. We have y is less than or equal to 1 half x plus 3. So there's our first inequality. The second inequality we already have in the correct form, y is greater than minus x plus 1. And notice how I circle both of them, so those are the two I'm going to work with. The next step is to take the inequality symbols and change them to equal symbols to find the boundaries. So again, labeling them, the first one becomes y is equal to 1 half x plus 3, and the second one will be y is equal to minus x plus 1. So these are the two boundary lines I am going to draw. Now remember that if it's less than or equal to, we draw a solid line. If it's greater than and we don't have an equal symbol there, we draw a dashed line. So for the first one, we can see that the y-intercept the, uh, y is 3 and the slope is plus 1 half. So 1, 2, 3, slope is 1 half. So that line looks like this. And it's a solid line. So here's the solid line, and I'm going to label that. Notice number one associated with number one here, associated with number one here. That's very important. That way we don't lose track of them. Next, y equals minus x plus one. So plus one is the, is the uh, y-intercept, and then the slope is minus one. So you can see that the slope, uh, it's going to become something like this. So here's the intercept 3, there's the intercept 1. I missed it a little bit, but it doesn't matter. At least now you can see that with the two boundary lines, oh, and by the way, I missed something. Since we don't have an equal symbol there, we need to draw a broken dashed line. So that's easy. Since I'm working on a whiteboard, I just turn into a dashed line rather than a solid line because that means that the points on this line are not part of the solution. Okay, so now we have four regions. You can label them region number one, region number two, region number three, and region number four. So any of those four regions either satisfy or do not satisfy both of the inequalities at the same time. Now notice I'm going to pick test points, starting with one test point, probably multiple test points, because we should check each of the lines. And notice on step number five, I'm going to shade the regions that do not satisfy the inequality. I'm very strong about that. It makes it a lot easier to do that, but not all teachers like that. And most books do not follow that method. But in order to develop the right solution graphically, it's so much easier just to shade out the regions that do not satisfy. And whatever is not shaded at the end, that's the region that satisfies both of the inequalities. So I'm going to show you how to do it that way, but make sure you check with your teacher to make sure that your teacher likes that or doesn't like that. Hmm. And then we have to change the method. All right, so how do we do that? Let's pick a test point, and of course, I always like to pick a test point right here. And notice that this test point will, let's try line number two first. I'm going to pick this test point and see which of these two regions, this region or that region, satisfies the inequality inequality number two. And I'm going to test, pick the test point zero, zero. 
and I find my inequality too. That's why I like to label everything. So I'm working with the labels, and so I'm going to use the inequality y greater than minus x plus 1, and I'm going to plug in the test points 0 greater than minus 0 plus 1 question mark because we don't know if that's true or not. And let's see here. So this goes to 0. Is 0 greater than 1 question mark? And the answer is no. So I picked a point in the region that does not satisfy the inequality, inequality number 2. And since this is the dividing line of inequality number 2, that means this entire region does not satisfy that inequality. So let's go ahead and shade it so this entire region does not satisfy the inequality because this is the side of this particular line. So all of this does not satisfy inequality, including the points on the line. You can do a quick check on the other side. Let's take this point right here, which is 0, 2, and plug it in. So 0 and 2, 2 is greater than 1. So yes, this point does satisfy the inequality. Of course, we didn't need to do that. But you can quickly check to see if you did things correctly. So now we're going to test line number 1. OK. So line number one is right here, and again, I can pick the very same test point for line number one. And then the inequality for line number one is right here. So we have y is less than or equal to 1 half x plus 3. And we're going to do a test by plugging in 0 and 0, which is, of course, on this side of the line. So either this side or the other side satisfies inequality. So 0 less than or equal to 1 half times 0 plus 3 question mark. And so simplifying this, we have 0 less than or equal to 3 question mark. And the answer is yes. 0 is less than 3. So that's a yes, which means we picked a point on the side that does satisfy, which means the other side doesn't satisfy the inequality, which means this side does not satisfy the inequality. So I'm shading it out. Notice I'm shading that. So this area is shaded twice, but we don't care. So region uh, region uh, 1, region 2, and region 3 do not satisfy. Region 4 does satisfy. So that means this unshaded region is the solution to the multiple inequality problem, including the points on this line. So we can then take a red color. There's my red pen. I'm going to say this region right here, not including the line, and this region right here, all that satisfies the inequality. So this is the correct region that satisfies inequality. I typically just simply leave it blank and I do color the line solid that satisfies inequality. This one does not, so it stays uncolored or simply a dashed line. And that's how you find the region in a multiple inequality problem. That's how we do that. Yes. And then now the blank ones are the ones that satisfy. Mm -hmm. Correct. So not very consistent. Correct. So I should stay consistent in both cases, you think? Yes. Yeah, I think you're right. Especially since, um, yeah, consistency is probably best. So I should go back and do the other one and be consistent. But if you do that, then you have a problem because then you're going to color in a portion that does not satisfy and then how do you uncolor it? So let's say I did the first one, right? Mm -hmm. The first one was this one right here. Mm -hmm. So you're going to color in that side. So then you're coloring this section Yeah, but it's just, this is, I've always done it like this, always taught it like this, and this is a lot better, in my opinion. A lot better. It, it causes all kinds of problems when you don't do it that way. Because, like I said, people make all kinds of mistakes to try and color what satisfies what's, what is the solution, but then you have to be careful because it's for this line, but not for the other line. And if you just cross out what doesn't, it doesn't matter which line you're dealing with at the time. 
It's a lot easier. Just cross out what doesn't satisfy. What's left over at the end satisfies the inequality. A lot better. I like that method better. But if you want me to go redo the other one, I'll redo the other one. No, I'm just saying maybe you should just mention it. Well, when you have multiple ones, you should do it this way. And then... That's... No, it's easier to shade the regions that don't satisfy the inequality. But check what your teacher wants. No. Done these before and go through this. Yeah, and I tried it the other way, and I just said this is this is not the good way to do it. So this is definitely a better way. And I've always taught it like this in my classes. I know, I know, I understand. It's just the same. And I do that a lot with things when the book or the method that's supposedly the right method to use is bad. I just tell the students don't do it that way. And my experience is when students tried that the method I don't like they usually make lots more mistakes than when they use the method I show them so it seems to work, well, I said it seems to work. Me. yeah but you're a mathematician it didn't bother me. you're a mathematician 